Hey everyone, welcome back to another video where today we're going to be talking all about Warren Buffett, specifically this book, Buffettology. So what this book talks about is Warren Buffett's investment style. I liked it so much, I dove into Python and I began working out all these different rules to give stocks a Warren Buffett score, and that's what we're going to go over. It's eight different rules, we'll cover each of them, and then we'll talk about the companies that score all eight points. If you're ready, I'm ready, let's go. Hey, so for those of you that watch these videos frequently, you might have noticed I was missing on Thursday and Friday of last week. That's because I live in the great cold state of Texas. You know, we had power issues. Either the power was out or it was too expensive. It just took away a lot of the focus, but I'm back today, and yeah, we're talking about this book, Buffetology. So Buffetology is a book that was written to give you an idea of how Warren Buffett himself approaches investing. Now Warren Buffett, he has never put out a specific checklist. He's never put out that specific set of criteria in stocks that he looks for. So we have to rely on books like this to kind of give us an idea of, of what Warren Buffett really wants when he's looking for companies. You know, there's a lot of things you've probably heard. He likes moats. He likes good return on equity. He likes a great management team. Well, there's some of these things that Warren likes that we can quantify, run against every stock out there, and just see which stocks stand out against the pack. And so that is what this video is about. It's about those companies that stand out from the rest of the pack using eight specific criteria that I dug out of this book. So for the rest of this video, we're going to look at those eight specific criteria and why I picked them. And then to end out the video, and there's chapter markings below on YouTube if you just want to skip to the stocks that score a perfect eight. At the end of the video, I'll show you that list of stocks that scored all eight points. Also, like with all my videos, the data is in the description below. It's a Google sheet. It has every stock that I ran the score for. It has whether they scored a zero or one. And then it has their final score there in the right-hand column. Now, we should note up front that if I did not have the particular data that was needed for a particular stock, I just scored that as zero. This means that we might miss out on some stocks that should be an eight, but really ended up a six. But it's good that we don't have any, say, false positives. These are all true positives. We don't have any false positives sneaking away up there. So yeah, let's dig into the rules. So the first rule is consistent earnings. Does this company in question have consistent earnings growth? So I take five years ago. Let's say the earnings per share is $1. Then I take the most recent report. Let's say the earnings per share is $4. That company has grown its earnings consistently. To balance that out, I also take the trailing 12 months. So we take the last quarterly report, work a year back from that, and if the earnings have grown over the last year, then that's also a good thing. So to pass this first criteria, a stock must have consistent earnings growth. Now, the second thing I pulled out of this book that Warren Buffett looks for is the ability to pay down debts in a manageable way. Now that aspect is not well defined. So I had to come up with a definition myself. And what I went with was the sort of rule you have when buying a house. So when buying a house, you said to not take on a mortgage that's more than three years of your annual income. So if you make $100,000, your mortgage should really be less than $300,000. And I applied that same criteria to the debts here. So if a company has a high debt, they hopefully have high earnings to cover it. And just as an example, if a company has $300 million in debt, they should have $100 million in net income to cover that debt. So if a company can pay off all its debt within three years just from net income, that's considered a pass. So if a company has no debt, that's also a pass. Rule number three, and this is one that you hear Warren Buffett talk about a lot, and that's return on equity. So for rule number three, we are looking for high, consistent return on equities. Well, what is high? Well, in my case, I went with 15%. So if a company is consistently posting above 15% return on equity over the last five years, that is considered a pass. You get one point. If that company drops below 15%, it might be okay, we take the average. If that company is consistently below 15%, that's zero points. The following straight on from return on equity is high return on investors' capital or return on total capital. It's got a few different names. 
So we want return on investors' capital to be consistently above 12%. Why? Well, return on equity can be skewed a little bit depending on how the company is financed. That return on capital is a little bit narrower in scope. So a company with massive amounts of debt cannot skew this return on investors' capital. So higher than 12%, you get a point. Less than 12%, you get no points. The fifth point is going to be, does this company generate free cash flow? And it's a pretty simple one. I just look at free cash flow over the previous 12 months, so the trailing 12 months of free cash flow. If that value is positive, that's a point. If that value is negative, that's no points. This just shows that the company is generating more cash than it's consuming. It's not a high capital expenditures business, which is what Warren Buffett would look for. Rule number six, and this one has become especially important in my portfolio. I, I have a large holding of Apple. But rule number six is, does that company buy back shares? So to calculate this, I look at the shares outstanding five years ago and look at the shares outstanding today. If that count today is less than that count five years ago, I consider this a pass. If it's if that count today is higher than it was five years ago, I consider that a fail. So 1.0 point, points. Now, a why for this one? Well, share buybacks increase your ownership of the company as a whole. So if there was a million shares outstanding and you had 10 of them, you owned a tiny, tiny, tiny piece. I mean, you would still own a tiny piece if there was 900,000 outstanding, but you own a bigger piece having done nothing. Now there's arguments as to whether dividends are better, whether share buybacks are better, whether reinvesting that cash is better, but Warren Buffett likes share buybacks. This is a video about Warren Buffett. So going with share buybacks being a point and not having those share buybacks, zero points. Now this next score is a pretty easy one to score a one in. What we do is we get the initial rate of return for a stock. How we do that is we take the trailing 12 months EPS and we divide that by the current share price. This gives us a percentage back. Let's say that percentage is 5%. To pass this score and get that one point, all you need to do is have an initial rate of return that is higher than a 10-year treasury. Now, when running this score, I put in 1.1% for that 10-year treasury. You know, when Warren Buffett was investing, when Warren Buffett was making his billions, his 10-year treasuries, they were something. But 1.1% today, most stocks, as long as they are generating some form of profit, beat this score, they get that one point. 1.1% people. If you're investing in stocks that don't at least get an IRR of 1.1%, unless you are in highly speculative plays, you're probably doing something wrong. So as long as you have an IRR that beats that 1.1%, you get a point. If not, you get zero. Now, the last point is a little bit trickier to calculate. So what we do is we take analysts' growth estimates for the next five years. You can find these on websites like Yahoo Finance. If you click on analysis, I think Scroll on down, you'll see estimates of what the analysts believe this stock will grow like over the next five years. So we take that analyst's growth expectations, run it with the earnings per share over the next five years, and we get a new earnings per share. We times that by the company's average price to earnings. Now, a little bit of a caveat on this. If a company has an exceptionally high average price to earnings ratio, I reduce that down to 40. Why? I don't know. This is just the first time I've run this score. I didn't want companies getting multiplied with, you know, 100 or 200x on those earnings. So I brought it down to 40 just so there was something to start testing with. On the bottom end, I bring it up to 15. So if a company has a negative price to earnings ratio or a company has, say, a price to earnings ratio average of 7, they get bumped up to 15 just to bring them more in line with what a market average would be. So doing all this gets us a stock price. And then we have to figure out, well, how much bigger than today is that stock price. And what we do is we just calculate how much this stock grows each year, and let's say it is 15%. If it's 15%, that's a pass. If this stock is expected to grow 15% a year, it's a point. Because all we're looking for is something more than 12%. So if a stock is expected to grow at, say, 5% per year, that's not going to get a point here. If it's expected to grow at 10, also not going to get a point. We're looking for something 12 and above. So that's all the rules that make up this score. But before we dive into the companies that got those perfect eights, I did want to ask you, is there anything you would change about this score? You know, there's comments below. I want to hear from you. I made this score up based on the readings from this book. So if there's something that you maybe took from this book or maybe have taken from Warren Buffett's other speeches, letters, whatever it is, let me know and I would love to add that to this score.
yeah, let's dive into at least some of the companies that got those perfect eights. All right, so there are some big names up front that, well, some of them already are Buffett stocks, like Apple. Now, Berkshire Hathaway owns a decent amount of Apple stock today, and that stock scores an eight. There's also names like Adobe and Accenture, and then one that really caught my eye, Best Buy. We wouldn't expect to see Best Buy on a list like this, but it has been putting a great return on invested capital numbers over the last five years. Great return on equity. It's profitable. It's a $30 billion company. That one might be worth further research. Other names like Clorox, eBay, Fastenal, Facebook, they make the list as well. And like I said in the beginning, there are too many to show, at least in this sidebar. So the data is below. You can find all of these eight rated stocks. You know, they got the full eight points. You can find the sevens, the sixes, the fives, the fours, the threes, the twos, the ones, and the zeros. They are all below. But, and this is where we got to talk a little bit about the score and what it actually shows you. This score brings you companies that meet a very specific set of criteria. Now, these are criteria that I would say are pretty good. We're looking at companies that are profitable, companies that generate cash, companies that have high returns on equity, high returns on investor capital. We're looking at good companies here, but you have to make sure you're buying them at good prices. Now, you don't have to wait for them to become cigar bots. There, there is money to be made in some of these companies today. Like It's going to be hard to topple a company like Adobe, for instance. Adobe scores an eight. It pretty much runs design. If you want to edit photos, Photoshop. If you want to edit videos, you got Premiere Pro. If you want to do anything in the design world, there's a good chance you're going to be getting a subscription to Adobe's creative platform. And that's a hard lock to break. That's it. That's a network effect right there. So is Adobe priced high today? It is, but there's a case to be made that it's not priced high in the future, that buying it today is a good long-term buy and hold. And I think that that's probably the case for at least half of the stocks in this eight-rated list. But when it comes down to it, obviously quantitative, which is what this is, we just took math, we figured out a score based on some numbers on a page. Quantitative analysis is not the be-all, end-all. You will need at least some form of qualitative analysis. So you have to know whether a company like eBay is, you know, is it capturing users' minds still? Is that the place you go for auctions? I know it is for me. If I want to see the value of, of something used, like maybe a poster that I have or a comic book or anything like that, I'll go to eBay first. Have I bought anything off eBay in the last five years? Mm -mm. So you've got to at least do that qualitative approach. Don't just buy based on quantitative metrics. But yeah, wrapping up this video, I do hope you enjoyed it and I hope that I did this book at least a little bit of justice. If you did like it, leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel. I make weird, quirky data videos every week, right? So uh, yeah, if you want more of that, subscribe to the channel. I'll be trying to keep track of this score in some way, much like I do with the other scores I put out, the analyst score, the Piotrowski score, that cash flow over assets score, which actually, now that I think about it, that cash flow over assets score would be good to combine with this Buffett score. So that's an idea for a future video. If you're interested in that, subscribe. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.